Well, good morning, YouTube. Um, so it is a Sunday, which is uh, doing your little jobs day. Um, today, going to do some work on the, the Audi behind me, the Weiss car. So we went to the coast yesterday. Had uh, a late afternoon drive to get some chips, as you do. <laughs> and uh, um, this is all when the traffic had died down a little bit. Um, but coming back, there was a little bit of traffic around the Kingsland area. Always happens, always gets busy there. Um, and there was a little bit of muppetry going on in the traffic. And um, at one point, I had to brake quite hard. Um, and realised that the car seemed to be squirrelling a little bit. By that, I mean moving about, not pulling straight. Um, so brakes work okay. Um, but it's obviously under heavy braking. Something's not quite right. Um, so it, uh, I took it down the back road tested the brakes and, and it stops and all the anti-lock brakes and everything works okay um, but did a little bit of measuring um, let me just show you what I mean um, I have a tool it is this and it basically you can switch it on and you can use it for COVID of course it basically just tells you what temperature you've got in the well whatever you're pointing at in this case the discs as you can see they're 32 um, but I measured them all yesterday and all the rest are about 140 and this one was over 200 so it says to me there's a bit of binding going on so i'm just going to take the back wheels off both of them uh, make sure that you know the brakes are nice and free uh, free them up if needs be and um, then probably just bleed the brakes just make sure that they're spot on before the winter uh, to be fair the car doesn't get used as much as it probably should um, so obviously rust sets in the more it sits. Uh, I did change the brakes all round about two years ago. But like I say, with it sitting around, there's probably just a bit of rust needs uh, cleaning up, sorting out and greasing. So let's get on with it. So the wheels off. Um, it looks pretty free at the moment. Um, a little bit binding there. Um, yeah, there's definitely something binding. It's it's relatively free, but uh, yeah, it's obviously rubbing, so it's going to cause uh, a little bit more heat than the required, and it's going to obviously wear the pads down as well. So I think it's time to give it a bit of a smack with a hammer first of all, loosen it up as you do. Uh, this still look good, I'm not surprised because they're only probably two years old. Um, so I'm going to give it a little tap with a hammer, um, take it off and just have a good look round really. So on first inspection I think it's the typical Audi problem which seems most Audis suffer with and that's around the back here. Um, Inside there, if you can see it, hopefully you can, there's a lever and when you pull the handbrake on that lever pulls forward like that. Um, I think the cable's okay, but I think, uh, I've had these in the past suffer from the same problem, the actual lever um, has some gunk in there. So I'm just going to drop the caliper down and uh, see if I can free it up. I might just drop the cable off first of all. Um, Spray some good old WD-40 in there and just see what happens. Um, but I think that's where the problem is. Um, the disc seems bound when you pull that on, but if you give it a little bit of persuasion, um, it's going to take a little tap, I think. Like so. Cable seems quite tight as well. Um, there you go, freeze it up okay. So it's, it's definitely the handbrake binding, definitely. Um, uh, and again, same old Audi problem. It, it's strange, ironically, I had uh, an old Audi 80 years ago, had exactly the same setup and exactly the same problem. You'd have thought by now Audi would have learned their lesson, but it seems not. Right, let's waffle in, let's get this caliper, or oh, get the cable off first of all, and give it a, a bit of manipulation. I 
And there you go, one caliper off. Uh, obviously to undo these, you've got a 15mm just there. And as you saw, I was taking the 13mm out the other side. You've got to obviously hold this one because that whole assembly moves, has to because it's a floating disc, obviously. A uh, floating caliper, not disc. Um, so I don't want to put too much force on this at the moment, but uh, it doesn't look too crusty and too bad. Um, but obviously there is there's something going on. Um, and it's either in the caliper itself or it's in the cable. Don't think it's in the cable. The cable seems to be free enough, but you never know. So I'm going to back it off a little bit. Um, just enough to, to really just work that cable. Um, I say I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it is, but you know, until you get into this, you don't really know. So I'm going to have to get that cable off and just make sure it's nice and free. Uh, make sure the caliper arm's nice and free, and then go from there. Just a bit of a process of elimination. If you haven't got one already, essential airy tool. Let me show you how it works. Basically, you wind your plate right in, like that. Your plate fits in there, and then you wind it out to your caliper. Like so, and now, in theory, it's a bit tricky, but in theory, you can wind your caliper in. I'll be honest, that's tight. Don't like that. That is far too tight. I think I'm going to have to push it out a bit and retract it back in. With a lot of the uh, Good juice. Again, it seems to be typical Audi this. They've been doing it for years. Same old calipers, same old problems. Anybody that's ever owned an Audi will at some point definitely have rear brake problems. I guarantee it. Everyone I've had has always had a bit of a problem with the rear brakes. Oh well, we battle on. Well, after much manipulation and trying to back off this self-adjuster, um, it's pretty clear it's pretty stiff in there and that's, that's the cause of the problem. So I think the only option now is to, uh, to drop the caliper off and uh, strip it down and uh, see what's going on. Uh, maybe even replace it, who knows. But uh, yeah, this caliper is, um, although it's working, uh, you press the foot brake and the piston comes out, uh, it's not retracting properly. Um, well it's certainly not self adjusting properly put it that way so I think what's happened is it's adjusted itself up and uh, it's just become too tight it's um, yeah it's it's not right and if it's not right it's got to be sorted you can't mess about with brakes so uh, right let's drop this caliper off see what we're faced with And there you go, one good thing with the Audi is at least they uh, are relatively easy to work on, a relatively good idea. As you can see the cable, not a problem at all, that's nice and free. It's definitely that piston there, so uh, yeah, I've got some work to do. Um, yeah, again, everything's nice and free. The piston is working, but yeah, it's just a self-adjusting mechanism, it's definitely gone and all it is basically is that pot there uh, goes into a screw mechanism and I think well something's definitely gone wrong with that so I have to pop it out and have a look right it's on my very messy bench so uh, see what we can do Well, 
I'll be honest, this is looking more and more like it needs a new one. Um, that is, as you can see, I had the mole grips on there, but it's it's clean in there, but it it is solid. As I say, it's only a screw attachment in there, but yeah, it, it ain't moving. So I'm going to drop it all the way out, which is a bit of a problem because obviously this rubber you can easily damage by doing that. But uh, it's got to come out. Um, that's the only way around it now. Uh, and see if I can free it up when it's actually out the unit. Um, but so there's a fair chance I'm going to have to replace this one anyway. But ah, such is life. So hopefully, as you can see, there's a a screw worm in there, and in the back of this there is another screw attachment there. That's basically what it's doing. It's running on that screw. But for some reason it really isn't playing ball um, and I don't know why. Uh, I guess the screw could be stretched, there could be a problem there. Uh, it seemed to pop out okay. Um, I don't think I've damaged the seal, at least I hope I haven't damaged the seal. I'll give that a bit of a clean up before I put it back in again. Um, the cylinder seems okay, there's a little bit of rust just there which I'll polish off with some wire wool but uh, to be honest it's it's not looking too bad but obviously it is because it just isn't adjusting oh well Well, I don't mind telling you, this is a right royal pain. <laughs> I bet there's an easier way to do it, and I bet people are shouting at me through YouTube now. Um, well, this is the way I've always done it. This is actually just a dust seal, so, uh, I mean, if you do break it, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's not good because it lets ingress of uh, dirt and stuff into your piston itself. Um, they will work without these, but like I say, you just don't. You don't want to break them because they are there for a reason. Uh, so right, I'll, uh, I'll battle on. Enjoy my struggle. I bit the bullet and I pulled it out. <laughs> uh, I've done this in the past before, but uh, getting them back in that bleeding groove again is not not easy, sometimes it's easier to do it the way I've been trying to do it, but um, that ain't working, so pointless trying. Right, I'm going to clean up that ridge there, um, where that sits in. As you can see, it's been there a while. <laughs> it's all frosty and, and horrible, so I'm going to clean that up. And uh, I think, first of all, what I'm going to do, before I start putting this seal back on again, which is obviously going to be a pain in the backside, I am going to try and get the screw part of it working because that's obviously the issue I've got um, and that's the bit I need to sort out so it makes sense to be happy with the screw mechanism before I go bolting it all back together again I guess in my head of logic we shall see um, so obviously like I say there is a seal get a clean piece of cloth because I don't want to make don't want that to be all gunged up. Uh, there is a bit of gunge in there. Let's, let's get the WD in there. Want to make sure that seal is well lubricated. The seal that actually holds the piston, not the uh, the seal that's the dust cover. And uh, I think I'm going to get some air in there and give it a blow out as well, just to try and get some of the crap out. Because inevitably there is a little bit of crap in there. Right. Well, as you can see, <laughs> it's, uh, it was a bit of a struggle, to say the least. Um, but it is feeling uh, a little easier now, I'll be honest. Um, I'm not 100% happy with it, but um, it came out pretty easy. Let me just show you. Pump the uh, handbrake, and it pops out okay. So it's 
the mechanism's doing what it's supposed to do. So there you go. It's popping out pretty good. I'll be honest, that's about as far as it's ever going to go. So we'll put the tool back in. Um, you can say this tool is. If you haven't got one, get yourself one because they are very, very useful. Um, so as you can see, with the tool, it doesn't take much effort to get it back in again. Okay, it will be, it will be stiff, but it shouldn't be to the point where you're almost breaking your wrist by doing it. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's. It's a lot better than what it was. I couldn't do it with a tool before. The only thing that would really get it moving was the mole grips. So it's definitely, definitely getting there. Um, I'm going to give it a couple more pumps in and out. And um, yeah, see where we go from there. I don't think I'm going to need a new one. But again, if I'm not happy with it, I will buy a new one. And I may just put this on for now, just to get the car mobile again. Not that we need it. Um, and then go from there. But uh, yeah, it needs a clean up as well, and I'll do that before it goes back on. But it's definitely feeling better, definitely feeling better. Well, I'll be honest, I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking, let's just buy a new one. Um, and now I remember why you don't take that seal off, <laughs> because the piston holds the seal in place. Hey! So you can't fit it after you've got the piston back in again. Um, so I've had to take the piston out, now I'm having to put it back in again. Um, which is a challenge, <laughs> as you saw last time. Oh dear, maybe some research online is um, my next move. <laughs> right, five minutes, have a break, think about it, calm down, and then we'll get back to it. Well, I persevered and got it sorted, so it's all back together again. Like I say, you, uh, you have to put the dust seal on before you put the piston in because it holds it all together. Um, obvious really, but there you go, such is life, you live and learn. Um, so it is back together, I've had it uh, in and out a couple of times. Uh, it seems pretty free now, certainly a lot freer than it was in the first place, I could hardly move it at all. Now the, the tool, this little beauty, um, will take it in and out relatively easily. Um, so I'm calling that a bit of a win at the moment, so all I've got to do now is bolt her back on the car and uh, give it a test. Right, well that's it back on again. Um, just release the pipe so I'll crack the drip the, the I'll crack the bleed nipple get some fluid back into it and see what happens you can see at the moment everything's fine but obviously as we work it the self adjuster is gonna start to tighten up um, and I can work it with the uh, with the handbrake but I'd rather do it with the foot brake to be honest so I'm gonna crack the bleed nipple open and probably get my pressure a device onto the system itself um, I'll show you that it's basically it is a device that goes onto the reservoir and pressurizes the whole system uh, to about 20 psi it does a very good job as well um, very good for bleeding brakes on your own right um, I'm gonna get a socket on that bleed nipple uh, and do it properly because I don't want to mess it up and then we'll see where we are <sighs> well I was trying to avoid the expense of a caliper, seeing they're around 150 quid. Um, but then I had to take the bleed nipple out, and it's basically just pulled the threads out of the caliper itself. So there ain't no way that's going back in again, or holding fluid. So a new one it is. Sometimes, just sometimes, you feel like you're wasting your day. Well, nobody likes to admit failure, but in this particular case, um, I'm going to have to. It looks like um, whoever bled the brakes last rammed them up with an air gun or something, because, like I say, what's happened is I've tried to undo the bleed nipple, and it's just literally, I don't know if you can see that, it's literally just completely stripped the threads out of it, so there's no way that's going to work again. Um, so I've got uh, two new ones ordered. I thought they'd get two because uh, if this side's like that then I might as well do the other side at the same time. Um, so unfortunately this poor old thing's got to sit on blocks for a few days. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be about Thursday before the parts turn up. Uh, got them online because everywhere I checked that I normally use um, they were coming up with ridiculous prices or out of stock. 
Um, so uh, typically one was coming up over £100. I got two online for quite a bit less than that. So it will sit like this for a little while. Um, again, I'm going to put some blocks under it, uh, make sure it's not going anywhere. And the wife's going to have to use the S3. <laughs> but such is life, these things happen. Never mind. Right, this is going to be, um, I think, a part two. Um, it's just beginning to look like a hubnut video. <laughs> Another guy I follow. Um, yeah, it's going to be Thursday at least before I get onto this again. So um, we'll post this video up so you can see the uh, the wonders of <laughs> changing brakes or sorting brakes out sometimes. And part two will hopefully be a little more successful. Okay, catch you later. <laughs>